So today we're going to look at exercise 3E, where we're going to talk about fitting a trend line and making some predictions using that trend line. But before I do, I want to go talk a little bit about what that means. When you're talking about fitting a trend line, what that means is you're finding an equation. And you're going to find an equation that fits the circumstances that you're looking at with your time series graph. Because as we already know, most of these things are not linear. Well, they're never going to be linear. Usually they're bouncing all over the place. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding an equation that can approximate that trend line that we've just been kind of uh, finding by eye. If there indeed is a linear trend line, because there's not always one, and we're going to look at a way that you can decide whether or not this is uh, an appropriate is appropriate for this situation. All right, so we're going to be finding that equation by entering things with the calculator. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the calculator to find the equation. So we'll talk about all those steps in just a moment and make sure that we all have them correctly written down. And then we're going to take some time and use them together to work out a few problems. The first thing, though, is that we can only do this if there is a linear trend line. And there are a couple of ways you can look at this. You could graph it and then look at that, or if you're already given a graph, and see, does the data look like a straight line could go between all of all of the points. It doesn't have to make a straight line, although most of these do uh, when we see the graphs of these. But we can check our R value. And you'll see what I mean by R value. You may have dealt with something, the R values before. This is called the correlation coefficient. But you can look at it as R. It'll be one of the values that we find today using the calculator. And if you look at that R value, if the R value is close to 1, then it is linear. So we could just look at the R value and see what happens if it's close to 1. Now, being close to 1 means that it better be over 0.9, right? So make sure that it is actually close to 1. It should be very close to 1 for this to happen. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the equation. And our equation the typical linear equation, y equals b plus a times x. And I'm sure you've seen this, this form of the linear equation, the slope-intercept form, uh, many times. You might not have heard it called that. Um, help me if I slip back into my Americanisms, because we call it, don't write this down, y equals mx plus b. So I often, when working with you guys, um, make small errors about which thing is which. You also need to pay close attention to the way your calculator calculates it because uh, calculators can use a slightly different format. As a matter of fact, I think they do. Hold on, let me just match this to your calculator. You'll probably be happier with that. A plus BX. All right, so you have your A and your B and we're going to be finding those values. So we'll just use it as y equals a plus bx. And again, if I slip into the American version, please help me uh, so that I don't confuse you further, OK? So just call me out on it. Happy to hear it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the calculator to find that. In order to do that, we're going to have to learn the keystrokes. And you will have to memorize these for the, for the evaluation, for the assessment, and we will but we'll do some more revision, and you'll be using it quite a lot in the homework that we're, that we're going to do today. So first thing I want to do is define a few of these points. And the first one is the A. And A is the y-intercept. So that's the point where your line is crossing the y-axis. And the reason that's important is because that is the point where x equals 0. And 
in graphing and, and in reading graphs and evaluating graphs, it's often helpful to know where that y-intercept is, okay? B is your slope. And you can think of slope, a better way of thinking of it in some of these problems, will be as change. Slope or change mean the same thing. Now, when you have the slope or change, you're, you're, you're measuring how the, the standard or set amount that things change. And you'll see some questions where we answer, we, we, we look at where you need to use the slope to answer the question. Okay? And then finally, we can use these. So we can use this equation to make predictions. Now, they're predictions, not fact. We are just saying this is what, it, given what has happened in the past, this is what happens, this, this is what could happen in the future. So be careful about uh, this. We always make, need to put that little caveat in that it's based on what's happened in the past. You can't always judge the future by the past. So we need to make sure that we uh, take, take that into consideration when we're answering questions, okay? So we're gonna be fitting the trend line and making pr predictions. You're not going to be doing much mathematics. The calculator will do this for you. Uh, you could do this by hand, but it takes hours. You don't wanna mess with that. So we're gonna learn how to use the calculator to find this equation. And your big takeaways from these notes are the form of the equation, the fact that A is the y-intercept, and that B is the slope and that we can use the equation to make predictions. So those three pieces right there are, are critical to being able to understand what's going on and answering the questions that, we're going to be, that are gonna be posed to you for this information. Now then we'll move on a little bit next time, still in 3E, working with deseasonalized data. And, but for the beginning, we're just going to learn how to find the equations. And again, you might've done this in the past. Hopefully you all have your calculators because we're gonna go there next. And what I'd like for you to do is to take the notes, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do an example together and I'm gonna demonstrate it on the, using the calculator and then I'm gonna give you an opportunity to uh, work with some of these. So let's make sure we all have good clean notes first. All right, now, so that's what we're going to be doing. And now let's talk about how we're gonna use the calculator to do that. to find the trend line using your Casio FX82AU. Now, for this course, remember, you're supposed to have the Casio scientific calculator. You do not need the graphics calculator. That TI calculator will not work in the, in the same way. So if you're, I should say AU, getting kind of messy. So make sure that you're using the correct calculator or else you're gonna get line, word, I mean, numbers that are way off because the, the keystrokes and the processes are vastly different. So make sure you're using the correct calculator. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to set the calculator into the correct mode. So near the top of the, of the calculator, you're gonna see, you're gonna see a button for mode. You're gonna push that. Then you're gonna push the number two, which is get you into the stats menu. Once you're there, you're gonna see that it can pulls up all kinds of different equations that you can use. So we're going to look for uh, the next option, which is two, and it gives you that A plus BX button. Assuming I don't have them backwards, we'll look at it. Then after you get to that particular equation, you're gonna see it opens up a chart and you're gonna enter your X and Y values. Now, when you're entering those values, you're gonna do the X values first all right, so you'll enter the value, enter the number, and then push the equal symbol. And that will allow it to go to the next X value, all right? Then you're, gonna, you're going to use the 
arrow keys to go to the Y values, and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna enter the numbers and then push enter. And every time you put enter, it's going to set the number in the chart and open up the next line so that you can put the next value in. Now when we're looking at this, we're gonna look at ways that you can scroll between the X and the Y. You're gonna use those arrow keys that are near the top of your calculator. You're gonna use this one to go over to the right and you could either scroll up until you get to the top, but if you have a lot of values in, it's easier just to use this key to go from, it'll take you from the bottom straight to the top of the list if you're in, in the very last entry. So either way, it makes no difference. It depends on how many values you have entered. If you wanna just hit this one or hit the bottom one, it makes no difference to me. Just whatever makes you happy. Now, when we do that, after we, we've done that, we need to set the data. And, when you, and you do that by something that is completely counterintuitive, you're gonna hit the all clear button, the AC button. And when you do that, you're in complete, your table is going to completely disappear. So you're gonna think that you've done something wrong. You haven't, it's just gonna set those values in and get you into the position where you can now do some operations with them so you can use them. So step five, is to find the values you need. And the process for finding them is the same for all until, the, until you get to the last keystroke. You're going to hit shift, which is up near the top. Then you're gonna hit the number one. Then you're gonna hit five, and that is the regression line. What we're doing is finding the linear regression line. That's what it's called. And then, depending on what you want, you're going to hit the next, the next value. If you're looking for your A, you're gonna do one and then equals. You must push the equals or else you're gonna think that every value you get is a zero. It's gonna just put a zero there. So you have to put the one and then equals. To find your B, you're gonna do exactly the same thing. You'll do shift, then one, five, and then the B, to find the B, you'll do, uh, that's key two is B, sorry, and make sure you hit the equal symbol. Okay, and then you'll have your values for A and B. We're gonna come back to something like this. You're gonna practice this quite a lot. I'm gonna come back to this, okay? So your last step is to write the equation in that form, All right? Your y equals a plus bx. But you're going to have values for a and values for b, so you'll be putting those numbers in. Now, a couple of things about the problems that you need to remember. These are the keystrokes, so let, I'm gonna stop for a moment, let you write those down. So make sure that you look for a scale in your chart to see if you need to multiply, have some multiplier. So again, millions, thousands, whatever that multiplier might be, depending on the, the size of the numbers. In order to get an, a proper equation, you have to multiply your uh, intercept by that number to get it. So if there isn't a scale factor there, you need to multiply A times that number. Otherwise, your equation won't fit. Now, you could still do it, but then somewhere you would have to also put in your, in your notes there in the, when you answer the question that it should be multiplied by 1,000. Well, it's a lot easier just to multiply it by 1,000. Now, I wouldn't do that before you put all the numbers in, and you'll see what I mean. I would do it afterwards, once you have your final number. Okay? Another thing is, if they're asking about change, again, that means your slope, that B. And so again, that, that slope, it means a constant rate of change, that it's, it's giving you this many more people or this, few more, this uh, fewer diseases, whatever you have, whatever you're measuring, it will talk about, that, that's your slope, that's your change or your constant that value is changing, okay? All right, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a few examples and see how the, all these keystrokes work and look at some of the exercises.